one of my favorite events of not only math but everything in the entire year because of such a community and positive environment that you guys create. Um, and all of that is thanks to two very special people who founded this event, um, Lila Drafts Johnson and Katrina Frazier. co-presidents of NHS um, and they wanted to create a service project that brought adults and teens together um, and talked about healthy relationships so we just want to give a big thank you to them and honor them um, unfortunately Katarina hit a pothole on her way here <laughs> so she's not here right now uh, fingers crossed she'll be able to come and perform with uh, Mr. Tooch later today um, but we just want to thank Lila um, and all the hard work that she did so we can keep doing this and still have it six years later. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So our first performers in Act 2 are Lila and her accompanist, well, um, Dorothy Travis. Um, Lila is a graduate of MHS and one of the co-founders of the Coffee House. She graduated from Oberlin College in the spring of 2018 and currently coaches track and field at Andrews College. Uh, she's accompanied by Dorothy Travis, her former piano teacher and longtime friend. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. 
We are shopping for groceries, comparing prices for gluten-free pancakes. Let me know when you need to leave, I say. I have a habit of getting carried away in the breakfast style. I'll let you know when it gets dark, he jokes. And I am staring at oatmeal, but it is not Mr. Quaker's face I see. It is his and mine, years and years on. Feel the same mad feeling of hope and future and future and hope that I get when we hang our coats next to each other. When I let your finger curl around mine half a second too long and it doesn't work out for us. But that moment, I find it again. This time, I share the poem with the boy, and he greets each stanza with a bouquet of questions. The first of which is, where's mine? I promise him maybe a line, and he promises me that I'll have to write an odyssey to capture just a glimpse of the journey he wants to join me with. I, I don't really know, but I know he's no haiku. <laughs> Another moment, then, so different from the last ones, but somehow the same. The room smells like cinnamon to mask the scent of death. The host lies in a coffin, and he is 17. He is my cousin. He has a name. It was Sean. And his girlfriend walks to the front to speak. But those are not words. They are like squeaks from a bird and in the howls of the she-wolf left behind. And the pain is the same as the silent kind that his mother wears. The same as the dry face of my still in shock mother. And the same as the tides and tides of tears from my then six-year-old brother who compares death to the extinction of polar bears because he cannot understand it yet, but he understands this feeling and I swore I would not say her name, but love was in the room when we said goodbye. And just when I thought I lost her, I found her again, this time in the face of a girl whose name carries the weight of a country. She teaches me that spring what boats, breakfast aisles, boys who ask a lot of questions, and yes, even the sickly sweet smell of cinnamon have in common. A word to be treasured and used carefully. And my poem is finished, and I look back at love, and she is crying, but she is smiling. She says, how am I, a one-syllable word so old and weak now? How am I supposed to capture all of that? But that is the beauty in love, because somehow she does. Thank you.